All right, so what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be doing a culture transfer. So we have our broth tube from our yogurt and we're gonna transfer a sample to an agar slant. You can see it's slant in a slanted position. So what we wanna do first is whenever we do a transfer, especially with broth, all of my growth is at the bottom of this tube. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna shake that up so I can suspend the bacteria that's now in that broth. So once that's suspended, we can then do a aseptic transfer. So whenever we do a transfer to an agar slant, we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna zigzag our way up with that sample up to the top. So we have to basically now go ahead and aseptic transfer from a broth tube to an agar slant. So whenever I do this, I like holding both of them in the palms of my hands. I kind of hold them between my thumb and my index fingers you can hold them a little differently if you want um, whatever feels comfortable is the way that you're going to do that so what i'm going to try to do is i'm going to try to put my agar slant here just so that way you guys can see how i do this transfer so i've already got my bunsen burner flame going so the first thing i want to do is i want to flame my loop so remember whenever you flame your loop you're going to start at the base by that handle and you're going to move through that hottest part of the flame until you get to the tip which is where the loop is located so once you have that, now I'm holding this like a pencil. What I need to do now is I need to uncap these tubes. So I'm gonna take one of the caps in between my pinky and my ring finger, and another cap in between my middle and my um, ring finger. And you'll notice that the way I'm holding it, the caps are pointed away from me. So now I have to flame both of these tubes. So I'm gonna start with that agar slant. You can notice I'm just kind of swapping as I'm doing this how I'm holding it. You just want to flame the necks. So flame those necks. And then once again, you want to hold it in such a way that it's going to be easy to transfer. So I'm going to hold it like this. So now my loop has been flamed. That's probably cool by now. So all I need to do is I need to just go in there and grab a small sample. And what I mean by small sample, it's just there's going to be a little bit of a shimmer on that. That's indicating that I've got now that sample. So now I want to go into the agar slant, being careful not to touch the sides of the tube and I want to start at the base and then zigzag my way up so you can see how I'm zigzagging that sample that I just grabbed once I get to the top I'm gonna to go ahead reflame my loop flaming of the loop remember is just to sterilize it prevent contamination when you're doing your transfer I'm gonna reflame the necks of each tube And I'm gonna wait for that to cool just a little bit. Once it's cool, I'm gonna recap those tubes, both of them. Now I'm done. So I can put these back where they came from. You'll notice that my broth tube is actually labeled my agar slant. I would now have to go and label um, that one as well with masking tape, making sure that I don't put any of that um, masking tape over the agar slant itself. Whenever you do this kind of transfer, you wanna be very careful not to press too hard on the agar. I'm, I'm doing it very lightly because this stuff kind of has the consistency of jello. And so if it has that consistency, if you press too hard, you can actually rip through that agar and that's gonna destroy your sample. So you wanna just do a very light pressure whenever you put that sample on the agar. Once again, I'd put my masking tape up here and then we're gonna stick it in the incubator. Once it's in the incubator, we leave it in there for 24 to 48 hours and then we look at the results.